Baseball, America's pastime. It's been a sport for almost 200 years with people playing it across America, with kids as young as four being in Little League to people out in their 70s just trying to enjoy it. But it has a big problem. Uh, recently, baseball has been having kind of a decline with not many people going to Major League Baseball games and uh, child enrollment in baseball programs on a historic lows. We're facing an issue where people are just simply not enjoying it. Well, there's a lot of reasons that could cause this I can, that I can't really fix. The thing that I can't control is understanding the science and the ways behind of how the things that you see on the field come to fruition. So the, what everything starts with is a pitch. What we usually see is, was the pitch hit into play? Was it a hit? Did the guy get out? But we don't really fo focus on how did we get there? How, what do we see? How did that occur? So the first thing we'd like to go over, and the first pitch, as there's many different types, is a fastball. Well, a fastball is simply put, the most efficient way to throw a baseball. It, it goes the fastest, as in the name, but it also has a little bit of backspin on the ball. This backspin has an interesting effect on the way that the ball moves in the air, causing it to create a little bit of lift. This is due to the fact of the ball spinning, of course, back, as all, also as going forwards. And because it's spinning back and forwards, there's an interaction that happens on different sides of the baseball that causes it to move in a different way than if you were to throw a normal, ba a normal baseball. For example, if you were to throw a baseball just regularly with no spin, it would travel in, a lip, in an elliptical path like a parabola, like you would see in math. But this spin on the baseball causes a difference in pressure in the bottom and the top of the ball. This happens because as it's moving forward and spinning down, the bottom skin of the baseball interacts with the air around it, causing an area of high pressure on the bottom of the ball. But on the top of the ball, as it's moving back, there's an, it doesn't interact with the air as violently due to, the bot, due to it moving roughly at the same speed of the air. This causes a pressure differential, causing the ball to rise a little bit higher and to move a little bit higher than that typical um, uh, parabola that we would expect. But how does this play into baseball? So with a batter's goal of trying to hit the ball hard, make a good contact with it, and hit it in play, we can understand our enemy as a pitcher is the major league batter. And their goal is to time up the pitch in order to hit it hard and effectively and start their swing at the right amount of time. So the first goal of the purpose of a fastball and the purpose of pitching in general is to know our enemy and to try to get them out. Our goal is to try to get the batter out. Well, he is trying to hit the ball hard, trying to hit it at an effective launch angle, and to try to make good contact in it and put it somewhere in the field of play. Where the science of the fastball plays into the part is that the cause, the spin of it, causing the ball to move up, um, makes the batter mess up where he's trying to make good contact with it as it changes his expectations. But as we see with Major League Baseball players that are able to hit amazing moonshots, home runs, dingers assorted, um, they are able to practice and get used to this and get used to the, the shape of so the pitch. So we can also use physics to our advantage with another pitch, for example, a curveball. With using the same principle of the differential of the spin causing a differential in force moving the pitch, we can use, instead of putting backspin on a ball, we could put topspin on a ball. This causes a violent reaction to rather happen at the bottom, but at the top instead, with a little to no force happening on the bottom and high force on the bottom, causing the pitch to move down rather than up. This can change the location and also messes up with the timing of a pitcher in a different way too as well. Or we can use context of trying to get the batter out because their goal is to try to find the location of the pitch where it's going to go and hit it as hard as they can. But with the fastball moving up, in the, okay. So if the fastball and a curveball were at the same speed, it'd be almost impossible to find out because of how little reaction time a player has in order to hit a ball with under two, two or three tenths of a second in order to find out where a ball's going to go. Is it going to be in the strike zone? And 
how, where is it moving so I can interact it with my bat and apply a stupid amount of force. Since again, the goal isn't just to make contact with the ball and put it into play, but to hit it with so much force to get it past, again, the 99.8% um, of defenders that fail and the great ex excellent defenders. So it's a really, really hard job and the numbers show it with only 32% of the hits, 32% of the time, of the best player in baseball walking up to the plate, did he end up standing on a base due because he hit the ball and got a base hit? So where does this really play in perspective? Since again, most people aren't gonna be major league baseball players, but yet a lot of people still play baseball. So the lessons that we learn and how to overcome these challenges and adversity that we face on the field can help us apply to all terms of life because Again, we can learn baseball is a game of failure. Most of the time when a player goes up to bat, they fail at their job. A lot of the times for a long time in a row. Aaron Judge on his historic run for hitting 62 home runs, he failed 15 times in a row without walking up to the plate and not getting a base hit. So what can we learn from this? Because there's obviously something that he's doing differently than everybody else or simply he wouldn't be on the field. So what we can do is understanding that we failed and just dissecting it, how did we fail? Did we, what did we, what went wrong and what can we have done in order to change what could make it go better? So for example, like we can break it down and what we can do differently in the future. For example, in the moment, we could walk up, take a deeper breath or look at, understand with other people that have gone before that, hey, if he's throwing pitches that aren't good and aren't gonna end up in the strike zone, Maybe don't swing because you'll probably get a walk. And also understanding, sure, if there's nothing we could have done better in the moment right then, but what we could have we done better to prepare? We could have practiced a couple weeks ago on what pitches he was going to throw as we know what he's going to get. We could have understood in the moment. We could have practiced a couple weeks ago, or we could have simply got ready a week or two ago with maybe better sleeping, better eating, so we're in a better mindset and better prepared as a person in order to hit it. Or we could have maybe made more focuses a couple months ago in our weight training or other abilities in order to change the outcome of what happens. And the last thing is, is to understand what, when we need to do and what we need to do in order to move on. So moving on from a failure can be a hard thing because we understand that this can affect our lives. I mean, we messed up, we didn't do what we were supposed to, but dwelling on it and letting it affect us and carry on into all of our lives, it's not good for us. Because if on Aaron Judge gave up and threw away his bat after the 14th and 15th time that he messed up, he simply wouldn't have broken a record and won MVP of the AL uh, League. So this is in conclusion, how we can learn and how it can transcend the fail the process of baseball and how we get through it can transcend into all our life and how we can learn to fail effectively. Thank you.